So we are going to start the class, guys. We are working in the page 140. Page 140. We are going to solve the exercise and complete the theory you have on this page. Uh, the first thing we have is the key concept. A percent is one way to represent the relationship between two quantities. Generally, uh, generally that of a part to the whole. Uh, you have a one representation in here. The blue part, 60% is X, and you have the other part, 100% is 15. So you have the radius in here. 60 over 100 equal uh, x over 15. This is the way we were working, right? Remember, you have one variable. It doesn't have to be x always. Only in this case, we use x, but you can use a other value, y, t, w. It doesn't matter about the value. Yeah. For example, if you are going to talk about the quantity of shoes, you can use as a variable s, the s of shoes, okay? It doesn't matter about the variable you take. The important thing is isolate the variable and find the answer. Now, we have the theory. So we are going to write in here the answers for these questions. For example, in the number one, how do percents show the relationship between quantities? You have two options in here. For example, in the key concept, you have one answer. A percent is one way to represent the relationship between two quantities, generally that of a part to the whole. So we can say that percent is a, ra a radio that compares a quantity to 100. Remember, we compare the value when, we're, when, when we are using the percent, we compare using 100. So that's the reason why yesterday we were dividing by 100, remember? So we are going to say that percent, this is the number one, percent, it was a point, is a radio, that compares a quantity to 100. Percent is a radio that compares a quantity to 100. So we relate the percent with 100. Now we are going to answer the number two. How does a value that is greater than 100 of the original value or less than 1% of the original value compared to the original value. Remember the examples we were solving yesterday. We have uh, some examples where the percent was over 100. It was greater than 100. And we had some values less than one. So how they re uh, relate with the original value? For the first one, for example, when the value is more than 100, the value is greater than 100. The value is greater than, but we are not going to write 100 now. I'm going to show you later. The value is greater than the original value, we are going to say. You know that the original value is 100%, okay? Uh, it's the total of this. And the other part is that the value is less than one, 100 of the original value. Mr. One one hundred is one over one hundred, right? It's less than this, so that that's the way uh, how we relate when the value is greater or when the value is less than the original value. Okay, now we can solve the 
we can find the answer for the question number three. In the question number three, we have Jean stated that finding 25% of a number is the same as dividing the number by one quarter. Is Jean correct? Explain. So you know that this is not correct because it's not going to divide. We are going to multiply the value by one quarter if you have to, if you want to find the 25%. Because remember when we multiply the top of the fractions, the numerator is going to multiply by one. And you divide by the denominator that is four in this case. So we are going to multiply the fraction. We multiply the fraction. So no, because finding 25% of a number of a number is the same as multiplying that number by one quarter by one quarter, not dividing. Not dividing it by one quarter. Okay. So now on the number four, okay, copy this one. And later we continue with the number four. The number four is more practical. Is this, do you know how? So we are going to find if we really know how to solve this exercise. An eight ounce serving of apples contains 8% of your daily vitamin C. How many ounces of apples would you need to get 100% of your daily vitamin C? Okay, so now we are going to solve this. I'm going to show you in here, I'm going to use black. How can we represent this? For example, if I use X, X is the value I want to find. This is the quantity, I don't know. This is the quantity for uh, my daily vitamin C, the ounces of apples. So you have this is equal eight eight are the ounces of apple this is dividing 100 dx i'm going to give more space aquí in here okay just give me one moment mm -hmm. so i'm going to give more space in here so you can see it better this is equal eight, I'm going to erase this B. Now, I'm going to show you the other thing. I'm going to show you, I'm only going to write the line in here to show you the fractions. I'm going to use the same black ink and this one too. You have this, right? You have X is the quantity you want to find. You don't know how much, uh, how many is X, how many ounces. 100 is the total in here, okay? I'm dividing by the uh, percent. In here, these are the eight ounces. You already know about the eight ounces of apples. And eight is the eight percent of your daily uh, vitamin C. Only eight percent of the vitamin C. So you understand? I have the quantities, I have the ounces up, and I have the percent on the denominator on the bottom. So we can solve this. I was uh, explaining so I can be sure that you understand. X is equal x 8 multiplied by 100 
and this is divided by another eight, the eight you have in here. And I'm going to write the line so you can see it in here, the fraction. So, what is the answer when we find this, when we have this? If you divide eight by eight, in here, for example, if you divide eight by eight, you obtain one, and later you multiply it by 100. So X is going to be 100. So in the text, we can say that X is going to be equal 100. This is the total of ounces you are going to have when you say 100% of your daily uh, daily vitamin C. This is the answer, 100, okay? This is for the example four. I only, I'm only going to write the number in here. I didn't write the number because you can get confused with the, with other, the other numbers. So I am going to have this only in this way, I think. So, you can uh, solve the number five. This is practical. You are going to solve it like the example we solved yesterday. The exercise I'm going to show you is the number six because it's a little tricky, number six. Only to understand it and we solve it and, okay, later we finish with this one. On the exercise six, we have that water has two parts. One part is hydrogen and one part is oxygen, H2O. For one molecule of water, each atom has the atomic mass unit, U. What percent of the mass of a water molecule is hydrogen? Okay, what are you going to do in here? For example, you want to know what percent of the mass of a water molecule is hydrogen? So I'm going to keep the variable X in here because I don't know the percent. So I use X to uh, find the percent. Later, we equal this, but uh, what number? I need the, the hydrogen. I need the, the parts of hydrogen. You have two parts of hydrogen, 1.01 .01 and you have 1.01. .01. So when you sum the parts of hydrogen, you obtain 2.02. Yes, until here? Okay, now the next step, remember in the last examples we we were doing like, for example, yesterday in the example says, try it. You want to know the percent, but you don't know uh, how much is the percent. So you divide by 100. You divide in here, the percent by 100. And this is going to be equal the total of this um, atomic mass. I'm going to sum the, the mass from the oxygen and for the hydrogen okay the hydrogen and the oxygen so i have two points o2 in the hydrogen and i add 16 to the oxygen so i obtain 18.02 remember this is the total what i have in the on the bottom so i only represent this as a fraction in here and in here the other fraction. So what I'm going to do, remember the 100 in here that is dividing my variable, I need to pass it to the other side to multiply because I don't want any number dividing my variable. I want my variable to be alone. So when I have X equal two point zero two multiplied by 100 and all of this is divided by 
18.02. So we only need to solve this operation now. We only need to solve this. And x is going to be equal x has to be 11.20%. Remember, we were looking for the percent. So you multiply 2.02 by 100, and you divide the answer of this by 18.02. So the answer in this case is 11.20%. Uh, this is the answer I have in here. I can write the answer like this, I think. Okay, so this is the answer I have 11.20% for the value of X. This is the percent of the mass of a water molecule, uh, the hydrogen, the hydrogen in a water molecule. Okay. Okay, you relate this, for example, in this case you have X. X is the percent, is the mass of water um, for the hydrogen, okay, the, mo and the molecule of, of the hydrogen. But you don't know uh, the percent. You know that the percent is divided by 100. We relate the percent with 100. Uh, actually, we have it on the first question. We compare say quantity to 100, so we do divide it by, we divide it by 100. In this case, is using the numbers you have. For example, you have two times the hydrogen. So I add 1.01 plus 1.01, so you obtain 2.02. .02. And in the denominator, you have the total. Remember, I write the total I have. The total quantity in here is the hydrogen plus the oxygen, okay? So I obtain 18 plus 2.02, .02, so I have this one. And later I only say pass this number that is divided in my variable to multiply to the other side. You are going to do always this, for example, if this number is divided, you always pass it to the other side to multiply because I want to have my variable alone. Now, in the first example, you have in here, you relate, X is the quantity you want to know, the number of ounces. And eight is the eight ounces you have. They give you the eight ounces. So you can see that we are relating, the important part is in here, that we relate the number of quantities on the denominator, the number of quantities on the denominator. The percent, in this case, 100% in the denominator, and I write the 8% on the denominator of the other fractions, okay? That's the important in here, that we relate correctly this. Okay, uh, only to explain why uh, that we don't use a formula, we use the radius, we use the equivalent radius, so I relate the quantities and the percent. So um, I think I'm going to finish in here, guys, like the class.